So let's talk about what flipped learning is, or what is flipped learning. Uh, flip learning is being used a lot in the, the last years or so due to COVID, I suppose, and even more hand, even more so uh, recently. Uh, I'm not sure that everyone has really understood the true meaning of flip learning, so that's why we just want to touch base before we continue. Because um, it's not just a bunch of videos we send home using technology. I suppose the best way to start off is actually giving you a clear definition, and I prefer uh, the flip learning network uh, definition and they say that flip learning is a pedagogical approach in which the direct instruction moves from the group learning space to the individual learning space and the resulting group space this is where the difference comes is transformed into a dynamic interactive learning environment where the educator guides the students and not sit up the front of the room and, and present co uh, the course material as they apply concepts and engage creatively in the su on the subject matter or in the subject matter. So basically, you could say that we give prepare work at home, but this is disputable because I'm talking about in-class people. We don't give homework uh, the flip learning material in the individual space. And then in the class space or the group space, they come in and they're actively involved in own learning, which means student-centered learn and obviously they have to check uh, their own understanding and maybe extend their learning you know assessment feedback and so on and so forth so let's do a quick recap the group space in traditional teaching the teachers at the front of the stage and, and presenting the material most of the times it's presenting lower order thinking skills and then by the time the class is over they haven't really managed to do the higher order thinking skills so what happens they give homework Whereas I say, or the flip learning classroom says that use the individual space at home as an in-class flip at the start of the class to present the flip material and then, you know, use a group space to dynamically involve all your students. So one of the quick questions is how can we flip the learning of our students? Well, that's easy. Uh, we have to be flexible in what we actually uh, choose as content, have this learning culture that uh, we always try to connect with our students and, and, and use the learning outcomes of what's best involved for them learning. And then the question is, what do we do with the group space time? Well, with the group space time, I think that's all the, uh, the whole idea of the flip learning is to plan your lessons having your students' learning outcome in mind. And maybe touch on how can we extend the learning of our students? Well, how can we send the flipped learning content home? Maybe you can use the in-house LMS, I use the Kudu Space platform, you could use Edmondo, Google Classroom, maybe an email, or just give them links, or like I did, give them a QR code. But it doesn't have to be video, it could be um, uh, read the grammar rules from the course book, it could be an article, uh, it, it could be an infographic, it could be a, a, a bunch of other stuff. An audio recording, a podcast, a video, from YouTube. So what we do with the group space, well this is where everything comes interesting because in the group space we're not just wanting uh, teacher-student interaction or student content in this action. We want the student-student interaction called collaboration. So we can use all these types of um, uh, approaches and, and methodologies uh, like project-based learning, gate-based learning, inquiry-based learning, um, and games and a whole bunch of other things. We, we're getting active, we're getting the students actively involved. What does assessment look like in these types of classrooms? Well, assessment doesn't have to be just uh, a Q&A session or a quiz or a fill in the gap activities. You could use your course book to touch on you know, how, they've, how much they've understood of your class material, but you could have some sort of an exit routine, maybe use post-it notes, uh, given rubrics or check this where they actually understand how much they should have understood and get them to self-assess. Um, assessment could be metacognitive reflection, get them to walk through the stages of what they're learning and how they've learned it. 
peer assessment, get them to prove to their peers what they've actually learned. That's quite interesting. And a few other techniques as well, maybe even Messini's Village. Great. That's it for now. See you later.